This is the woman brutally, senselessly killed during Wednesday's deadly chaos. 39-year-old Amy St. Pierre, she died following the rampage inside an Atlanta medical office. Her friends sharing these pictures of the woman that they are mourning today. And this is the video here that so many Atlantans desperately wanted to see after a tense but successful seven-hour manhunt. The man accused of carrying out the country's most recent mass shooting in handcuffs. Right now, Dion Patterson faces a slew of charges. The most serious is murder. Patterson waived his first court appearance today, and the investigation into Wednesday's violent event stretches into another day, and so does the attempt to heal for all of Metro Atlanta. We have live team coverage. It begins with Atlanta News first reporter Amanda Rose in Sandy Springs. And Amanda, you spoke with people praying for these victims. That's why right three of Amy St. Pierre's close friends tell me they wanted to honor her memory today and pray for the other victims of this senseless tragedy. It's what brought them here to St. Jude's Catholic Church in Sandy Springs. They say they've added Amy's name to the intention book so that parishioners here can pray for Amy too. The three girls met at their MBA program at Georgia State. They say Amy was a beautiful soul. They say she loved to travel. She was intelligent and outspoken, especially about social justice issues. She could speak Spanish and Chinese. She also was a loving and devoted mother to her five and seven year old children. And her friends tell me they cannot believe she's gone. And she was always there for us as a friend. She's a wonderful mom of two little ones. And yeah, she's just, we're gonna miss her. It really is such a tragedy. Tonight at 6, we'll hear more memories from those who knew and loved Amy. For now, live in Sandy Springs, Amanda Rose, Atlanta News First. And Amanda, we do have a statement that came from the victim's family. It's, it reads as such, our beloved Amy was brilliant, kind, big-hearted, and simply the best of the best. An Emory Honors graduate and a Georgia State MBA. Amy traveled the world with curiosity and courage. She was driven by compassion both in her work in the field of maternal mortality and in her everyday life. Amy was selfless always. She wanted more for others but never for herself. Generous supporter of worthy causes. She was the social conscious of our family. As of right now, you know, everybody is as stable as they can be given the nature of their injuries. The four women who survived Wednesday's shooting, all in the hospital still. Grady Health System's chief medical officer provided an update. Lisa Glenn, Georgette Whitlow, Jasmine Daniel, and Alicia Hollinger are the injured victims. Atlanta News First anchor Megan Packer, she picks up our team coverage live outside of Grady downtown. Megan, good afternoon. Sean, hello. I can tell you all four women are still getting treatment here at the hospital. Three of them, we're told, are still in the intensive care unit here. And uh, their families are here by their sides. And the chief medical officer had a chance to speak to those victims and the families today. We heard from Dr. Robert Jansen earlier this afternoon. He provided an update to us. Uh, he says that he's talked with two of the victims, but the other two are so critical they cannot speak. So three of the women are still in the ICU and two Two of them needed to have more surgery today. They're all being treated by trauma surgeons and nurses. Remember, Grady is the only level one trauma center in the city after Atlanta Medical Center closed six months ago. Grady's CEO has said in the past that closure would put a lot of strain on other health systems in the area. And this downtown hospital, though, is used to seeing multiple gunshot patients come in a day. We drill for this frequently. And, you know, sad commentary, the number of injuries that we received yesterday at one time is not an unusual event. We initially thought we were going to receive 12 patients, so we had rooms open for 12 patients should they come. And we had those fully staffed, physicians, nurses, ancillary staff, they were all in standby waiting for the patients to arrive.
And this is also a very stressful event for the doctors and nurses and staff working at this hospital. They are taking care of people who were shot at a medical facility. So tonight at 530, a little bit more from Dr. Jansen about how they are getting through this tough time and the resources that they are offering to their own staff members here at Grady. We are live outside of Grady Memorial Hospital in downtown Atlanta. Megan Packer, Atlanta News First. Megan, their work has been remarkable. Thank you. Now the demand for stricter gun laws, it is something we hear so often after any mass shooting. And we can tell you today, conversations on the issue are happening right now among Georgia lawmakers from both sides of the aisle. Atlanta News First political reporter Doug Reardon is live tonight in Midtown at the scene of Wednesday's shooting. And Doug, some lawmakers are blaming Georgia's gun laws for what happened yesterday. They are, and others tell me this isn't a gun issue at all. It's more of a mental health issue all the way. But regardless of that, there were several gun control measures as well as even mental health measures that failed to get past uh, the General Assembly this year to become law. And so is that something that uh, lawmakers are looking at for next session? Absolutely. Both sides of the aisle tell me that. I talked to Democratic State Representative Park Cannon earlier today, who represents the Midtown area here where this happened. She was just a mile away from this facility when the shooting broke out. Cannon said that her bills on safe gun storage and red flag laws made no progress in the Republican-dominated state legislature this year. And again, even a bill that would have hired more mental health workers and allowed for more studies of mental health and its status here in Georgia also failed. Georgia Democrats are now calling for stricter gun laws and a second look at the state's health care system. But some Republicans say this isn't an issue of firearms. I don't think so. I think the conversation needs to be centered around mental health. Richard Nixon declared a war on cancer, and we have and, and should declare a war on mental health. And that's, that's going to take participation from several facets of the community, from the law enforcement to counselors to just community leaders coming together and communicating. It, it seems to, ha to be almost a, a culture at this point. It is a culture. Gun, the gun culture uh, that is based on fear and also on uh, arrogance and uh, ignorance. And Representative Johnson said that both of his kids were working in the Midtown area. They both went on lockdown yesterday. This has become personal for so many lawmakers. We heard Senator Raphael Warnock say that even his kids were on lockdown, too. And so this is reaching uh, even the highest levels of government here. Now, I do want to mention, too, that mental health bill that we talked about that did not pass in this most recent session, 520, is still eligible uh, to be up for a vote next session because it passed one house, not the other. We're live in Midtown tonight. Doug Reardon, Atlanta News First. Thank you, Doug. As